Hello everyone and welcome back to another AKA video. Today we're going to be going through a guide to playing killer in Dead by Daylight, a beginner's guide for all of you new players out there that want to get into killer but don't really know where to start. And this is going to cover the bare bones basics of the game. So let's jump right into it with how to play the game. So beginning with tutorials, as we mentioned in our beginner's guide for Survivor, Tutorials are a great way for new players to quickly understand the aim of the game with a small bonus of 25,000 blood points after it as well. So these can be used to level up your killers for better perks straight off the bat, which then leads us into which killer to play. So when playing killer, it's important that you know the abilities of each killer and before choosing who to main, uh, how you want to play, what's your playstyle. So to do this, we recommend that you play each killer with no add-ons or perks and just see which ability best suits your playstyle and you have the most fun with. Obviously, if you want to be the best killer that has ever been, then something like the nurse would be a more appropriate choice. But if you want a more casual, relaxed approach to the game, then a quick look through all of the killers isn't a bad idea to really find out what you enjoy the most. This leads us on to crutch perks. So despite who you've picked to play, the four best perks for newer players to aid them despite their playstyle would probably be barbecue and chili, nurse's calling, sloppy butcher, and no one escapes death. Barbecue and chili is a leather face teachable perk and it gives you the ability to see all the other survivors auras for a few seconds after you hook a survivor, which allows you to maintain pressure around the map despite the killer that you're playing, it really doesn't matter. Nurse's Calling grants the ability to see the aura of survivors who are healing in a certain distance around you. Again, this gives you a chance to regain pressure on the map even if you lose a chase, uh, and it can be very useful for older and newer players really. Sloppy Butcher is a perk which is somewhat essential for new players, as it can be difficult to understand things like scratch marks, and it allows you to stay on a chase as long as the person is injured. Noed by now has become a staple for lower tier killers as it gives them a second chance when survivors become altruistic at the end of the game, which most high tier players may do. It allows you to one hit down survivors once the last generator has been completed as long as your hex totem is still active. And it's once again an essential perk to give you the edge as killer. So what are teachable perks then? Well, as a new player, it's essential that you have a strategy regarding who you're going to level up first, as each character has their own three teachable perks, and these can be unlocked in the blood web at level 30, 35, and 40. These teachable perks enable other survivors to unlock them through the blood web as well, so whatever killer you play, it doesn't matter, as long as you've unlocked them for the killer that they are the teachable for, you can use them with the other killers. So then we have to ask which are the best teachable perks. Well, by far the best teachable perk, as we already covered, is barbecue and chili. Not just because after you hook you can see where everyone else is, but as a new player you can level up characters quicker as well. Barbecue and chili gives an additional 25% extra blood points in the trial for every hook, and at tier 3 you get double the blood points if you hook each survivor just through using this perk. Barbecue belongs to The Cannibal, which is a licensed DLC, so if you want that perk, you will have to buy him, or you can buy the perk from the Shrine of Secrets when Barbecue is added to it. After getting Barbecue, I would recommend getting a Nurse's Calling, as it complements Barbecue and Chili well due to its ability to keep pressure on the survivors. This perk belongs to the Nurse, but was mentioned previously, so let's move on straight to the third essential teachable perk for newer players, which is Enduring. Enduring is a perk which enables you to have less of a cooldown after being stunned in the trial. This might seem like a wasted spot, but for newer players it's essential not to be scared of pallets. Respecting pallets, as it's called, can give the upper hand to survivors if they hold their nerve, so it's best to run straight into a pallet as you might catch survivors off guard as they misjudge your swing. Enduring is a teachable for the hillbilly. Finally, I would recommend Bloodhound, which is a Wraith perk. Newer players should consider this since the chase mechanic at first can be confusing with scratch marks on your screen. Knowing which to follow takes some time for newer players, whereas if you use Bloodhound, following Bloodstains is easier than scratch marks at first. This will introduce you to the chase mechanic of the game and it makes 
a more fun environment for you as a killer, especially if you're new. Then we move on to add-ons. Each killer has their own specific item, such as the chainsaw for the hillbilly and the hatchet for the huntress. And each item can have specific add-ons to improve the item's effectiveness. Since there are so many different combinations, we won't be going through them all in this video, but a link to the Dead by Daylight wiki showing all the add-ons for every killer will be in the description. But an example of a good combination is, say, Thompson's Moonshine and Carburetta Turning Guide. These complement each other for the hillbilly, allowing him to move quick and with more agility when revving his chainsaw. The key to add-ons is just trying them out. Find which ones complement your playstyle the best and you really won't go far wrong. Next is offerings. Now, these can be unlocked through the blood web, with the majority affecting how many blood points you'll get at the end of the trial depending on what you do during the trial. As well as blood point offerings, you can get hook offerings, and these add more hooks to the trial, which make it easier to get a down survivor to a free hook. The most interesting set of offerings, however, which you can bring to the trial is the Mori. These enable you to kill survivors on sight depending on the rarity. The Memento Mori allows you to kill anyone once they have been hooked at least once. The Ivory Memento Mori allows you to kill one person once they've been hooked at least once, and the Cypress Memento Mori allows you to kill the last survivor in the trial. The final type of offering is a map offering which pretty much guarantees that you're going to get sent to a specific map. As well as offerings which affect the trial in some way, you can get offerings which enable you to play as a DLC character if you currently don't own them. These include the Black Splinter, which lets you play as Michael Myers, the Bone Splinter, which lets you play as the Cannibal, the Smoking Splinter, which lets you play as Freddy, and the Glass Splinter, which lets you play as the Pig. These offerings give you a chance to play the DLC characters before you purchase them, a bit like a test run as that killer, and if you remember before, we say check out all the different killers before you decide which one to play, this is a great way to do that. So next is how to use the blood web. Well, the blood web is part of the game which enables you to progress. By leveling up your blood web, you unlock more perks, offerings, and items for that specific character. Until level 10, you'll have to unlock all the parts of your web, However, after this point, the entity will wake, preventing you from getting every single part of the web. At this point, the most effective way to level up a blood web is by getting the common offerings and items as frequently as possible. This will enable you to go through the blood webs for a lower amount of blood points. And if you do this, you will get to rank 40 for the killer that you choose in no time. Finally, we have Iridescent Shards, and these can be used to unlock teachable perks in the Shrine of Secrets, and can be used to unlock cosmetics in the item shop. As mentioned before, it's probably best that you hold on to Iridescent Shards until you can get perks that perhaps are teachables for killers that you don't have, such as the DLC killers. That's usually the most effective way to go around these, but if you want to unlock, say, cosmetics as well, it's a pretty cool addition and it makes your killer look really neat. So that's pretty much it for the basic Dead by Daylight killer guide. Uh, let us know in the comments if there's anything we've missed here or if you enjoyed the video. Be sure to like it if you enjoyed it too and subscribe for more content like this. Apart from that, this has been AKA and we'll see you in the next one. Thank you. Peace.